Uh, Earlier this year, uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, the Honorable Ted McNeekin, introduced legislation uh, in the legislature called Bill 73, uh, Smart Growth for Our Communities Act. And uh, the legislation, um, the, the whole process to come up with this legislation started back in uh, 2013. The then Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, Linda Jeffrey, who's now Mayor of Brampton, uh, started a consultation about changes to the Planning Act, the Development Charges Act, and uh, just the, the overall land use planning system in Ontario. Uh, last year, of course, we had the, the provincial election. Um, I was elected uh, the MPP for this riding, and uh, when I was given an opportunity to do a private member's bill, I did my private member's bill on planning reform. That was Bill 39, uh, private member's bill. And it essentially was all of the requests of the City of Toronto for changes to the Planning Act. So uh, that bill was uh, brought forward uh, in November of last year, and it's, it's still making its way through the process at Queen's Park. And really, um, it's, it's part of an ongoing process at the province to, to make some significant changes to, to the Planning Act. But there's a number of key themes uh, that this legislation touches on. Uh, first one is giving local municipalities more uh, decision making on local planning matters. So in large measure what that means is that in a number of uh, ways if a municipality makes a decision there will be no appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board under certain circumstances. That's a significant uh, departure from what we've had. Uh, it also speaks to modernizing the Planning Act uh, and this is where a lot of the issues around regulations that will come later come in. Uh, looking at things like uh, how do we provide notice uh, to communities when there's a development application, whether it could be done through email, through social media, through other means other than just a flyer in your mail which, which you may or may not uh, read. Uh, and also uh, it, that's where we're going to look at issues like what is a minor variance and providing more definition for what a minor variance is and in certain respects limiting the, the scope of the Ontario Municipal Board in, in how they deal with matters that do go before them but sort of circumscribing a little bit more how they're meant to deal with them. Uh, another key thing is granting municipalities uh, more powers to manage the demands uh, from intensification and growth and uh, that is partially around how uh, the bylaws can be decided, uh, how they can be set up uh, how you derive benefit from development and uh, how you also control uh, the re uh, redesignation of employment lands, core, core employment areas uh, and the pressures that that often creates that completely upends uh, sort of the, the fabric of a neighborhood when it expands the residential uh, area and undermines the ability of businesses to, to continue to operate uh, in an area. So that's another one of, of the themes. Increased development charges to pay for growth, that's a big part of uh, this legislation. And finally, uh, putting in place a lot more uh, requirements for municipalities to account and report out on uh, the monies they collect from development, how much they collect, why, and how they spend it. And I'll be getting into, into that uh, as well.